Well, as you know, there's actually two investigations going on. One was launched by the United States National Transportation Security uh, Board, and the Safety Board is really looking at all the events leading up to it, and they are still in the midst of their investigation. We're hoping to get a preliminary report out of them by early May. But the city of Baltimore initiated this second investigation due to the fact that there were six crew, uh, six workers on the bridge who have perished. And so now we have kind of concurrent investigations going on. So we haven't gotten anything released. The big issue has been reports that the ship may have lost power prior to departure. So my understanding is that this, this ship has had, this vessel has had an incident before um, that may make it liable, that means it may not have been checking the systems or knowing that it was, was, it was going on voyages without being properly seaworthy. Yeah, the vessel had several instances in the past, including a, a very dramatic uh, dock strike back in Antwerp, although at that position, that event was determined to actually be pilot error. But any ship does have mechanical issues. The ship was discovered to have a mechanical issue earlier in the year. But everything up to this point, including an inspection done by the U.S. Coast Guard in September, had certified the vessel as fit for sea. Yeah, so we've got to be careful not to jump to conclusions, really, until they properly investigated. Why has the FBI launched a criminal investigation? Well, the death of six workers on the bridge has led the city of Baltimore to want to get uh, the investigation going on a criminal level. They believe that there's potential negligence. There was an early report on the ship that the ship had been losing power during a loading operation. Now, this does happen as you load refrigerated containers on board as you start drawing more and more power. However, if there is an indication that this was a systemic problem, that the crew knew that the vessel was losing power and it wasn't due to any loading operation, then the ship could have sailed with negligence, and that is what the FBI is investigating right now. Right. You know, we're just looking at, again at that incredible vision, and, you know, the, the ship is disabled. Extraordinarily, the ship's crew are still stuck on the boat. How long might they be kept there? Well, the ship was preparing the sail to Sri Lanka, so it had been prepared to sail for 35 days. But you really need the crew on board because it is still an operational ship. Uh, mm -hmm. As the Port of Baltimore prepares to open up this new temporary channel that will allow ships in with less than 35 feet of draft, they have to be careful that the dolly doesn't shift. It still has about four to 5,000 tons of bridge lying across it. That's going to be a very intricate salvage operation that still needs to be done, and you may need the ship's propulsion to hold the ship in place and to pull it off from where it's grounded up against the southern pier. So the, the, the crew are really quite critical. You, you're talking about opening up that other channel. Uh, you know, how much, uh, how much cargo is flowing in through that, uh, th that, that uh, harbour at the moment? Well, very little is coming in. Uh, basically, what you have had is a series of temporary channels open, but largely that is tugs and barges moving in. This opening of the channel, the main channel, is significant. They have removed a lot of the above water uh, obstructions, that big kind of trestle feature that you saw on that bridge has been removed. The bottom of the bridge, the roadway itself, is still at the bottom of the bay, but you will be able to get ships less than 35 feet draft over that area. They're opening the channel for a few days. They're going to try to get ships that are stuck in the Port of Baltimore out, and they're actually going to bring some ships in and out very quickly so they can start moving at least some car carriers, some containers, but the deep draft vessels, particularly the bulk carriers that bring ore, coal, and sugar and salt in and out of that port are not going to be able to get in until they clear the entire channel down to its 50-foot draft. Wow. And how long do you think that's going to take? Well, the... Army Corps of Engineers, who's overseeing this, are ahead of schedule. They did not expect to open this temporary channel till the end of April, early uh, uh, May. And they are forecasting that they may be able to get down to 50 feet, at least with a temporary channel, not the full 700-foot wide channel. But they may be able to do it by the end of May. So, so far, they are ahead of schedule. The weather is going to be the big issue, and any obstructions that occurs with the removal of the dolly. The dolly will be the big move right now. They've got to get the ship out of the way so that they can start removing the rest of the bridge structure in the deep part of the channel. Yeah, and to your point earlier, safely as well. Um, it's, you know, rebuilding is obviously going to take years, I'd imagine, before everything is, like, fully functional again, um, even if they can get cargo, throw, you know, flowing through more, more, prop more properly. Yeah, I mean, there's 
studies underway for a replacement bridge. Obviously, one of the big features of any replacement bridge is going to be the placement of the main pillars away from the channel. One of the things that has happened here is as ships got bigger, that port got dredged out and that channel got wider and wider. And that's one of the reasons why the pillars of the bridge were so close to the main shipping channel because of the growth of ships. And replacing a bridge is a huge in <laughs> undertaking. It's a lot of money, a lot of time. This was a 47-year-old bridge. And it's really highlighting across the United States and hopefully around the world that everyone is taking a look at their infrastructure and the dangers that they could potentially face with such large ships coming in and out. We're moving cargo much faster at a greater velocity and volume than ever before. So we really need to take some uh, awareness of risks like what happened in Baltimore. Yeah, because the structures are probably just not to scale any longer, as you point out. Sal, great to get your expertise. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me this evening.